All right, this was going to be our first foray into thermodynamics, and we want to refresh some things that we did in honors chemistry, dealing with entropy and how it affects something called spontaneity. Uh, we'll get back to this equation in a little bit. You guys probably remember this one, where we say delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. This is an equation that we've seen before, and some of these terms are terms that we've also seen before. So, for example, this delta H, we're going to call this enthalpy. Uh, that's a, another fancy word for heat. And we usually measure this in joules. Obviously, whenever we see T, we know that's temperature. It's usually in kelvins. This guy, delta S, this is going to be something called entropy. Let's take another look at that term, entropy. And we're going to look at this as another term. We're going to call this dis order. And we should mention that disorder is favored by the universe. It's just one of those laws of matter. It's why explosions always scatter stuff everywhere. Uh, it's why when you uh, drop a bunch of Legos, they go under the couch and roll into the refrigerator and all that go, go everywhere. It's a reaction. It's a it's a property that uh, just like if we were to say heat, if we were to say that the universe favors reactions that give off energy. In other words, the universe favors reactions that are exothermic. And if we were going to abbreviate that, we would say that reactions that have a negative delta H. You don't have to add heat. They give off heat. They release heat. The universe also favors reactions that increase disorder. So we'll say positive delta S, the uh, increase in entropy is favored by the universe. So if we were going to be dealing with something called spontaneity, whether a reaction runs by itself, we would say that a reaction runs by itself, in other words, is what we call spontaneous, if it a releases energy in other words has a negative delta h and if it increases disorder it has a positive delta s now there are certain combinations uh, we could say that combination one a reaction has a negative delta H and a positive delta S. This kind of reaction is always spontaneous, meaning it always runs by itself. The exact opposite, a positive delta H and a negative delta S. In other words, requires uh, increase of energy and it results in a decrease in disorder. This kind of reaction is never spontaneous. And then we have situations where we have a negative delta H. It gives off energy, but it has a negative delta S. That depends. That's what our equation for Gibbs free energy is for. We would have to use delta G is equal to delta H minus T and delta S to find this out. Although, you could probably guess that a reaction like this would be spontaneous as long as the temperature was increasing. 
and vice versa, a reaction that uh, requires uh, influx of energy but also increases delta S. Again, we'd have to use delta G equals delta H minus T delta S to figure this one out. We'll worry about that stuff later. What we're mostly concerned with is this thing called entropy. So we're interested in reactions that increase disorder. We're increasing disorder when, so we'll say reactions <coughs> that have positive delta S. In other words, that increase disorder. Anytime we have a reaction that goes from a solid to a liquid, or from a liquid to a gas, these all increase disorder. Anytime we have a reaction that goes from fewer molecules to more molecules is a spontaneous reaction. So a good example of a reaction that would be considered spontaneous would be the decomposition of calcium carbonate, uh, where it, this is a solid and it uh, results in calcium uh, oxide, which is also a solid, and carbon dioxide, which is a gas. First off, we're going from one molecule to two molecules. Also, we're going from solid to a gas. Another reaction that we could consider to be spontaneous is the decomposition of ammonia into uh, N2 and three molecules of H2. That's a gas, and so is this. But because it goes from two molecules to four, that would be considered spontaneous. All right, that's a real simple concept, spontaneity, but I'd like you to take it for a spin, all right? Also, I'm gonna ask you to refresh your Hess's Law. So what we're about to do, I'm gonna ask you, if you remember how to Hess, where we say Hess's Law, that says a reactions total delta H is equal to the sum of the delta H for each step. Well, we can do that with delta H, and we can also substitute delta G. So I'm going to ask you to use a little Hess to solve for some delta G. Uh, there's another way for doing it, too. We could say that the total delta G for a reaction is equal to the sum of the delta G of the products minus the sum of the delta G of the reactants. So you could try either one of these, and they work just as well. And uh, I'll ask you to try a couple of these. They're mostly uh, review. We've done Hess's Law before. Uh, and you just need to make sure that your step equations equal your target equation, but you've done all that stuff before. So take all that stuff for a spin. I'm going to ask you to try a couple problems on uh, entropy and a couple problems on finding the overall delta G before we dive back into Gibbs free energy. Okay, so take it for a spin, and uh, I'll uh, do a couple here quickly, and uh, then I'll let you go. All right, let's try a couple of these. And it's asking us to predict the sign. Is the disorder increasing or decreasing? So let's take a look. Here's part A, and it says we've got solid sodium combining with uh, half a molecule of diatomic chlorine, which is a gas. And we produce one molecule of sodium chloride. And we're not worried about the overall spontaneity. All we're doing is predicting delta S. Well, we're going from... Uh, more molecules to fewer. We're going from one and a half molecules to one. Also, we're going from uh, what is clearly a solid and a gas to strictly a gas. This would be a decrease in delta S because of uh, decreasing disorder. So, decreasing the potential 
to make a mess, in other words. How about part B, where it's asking, uh, we've got uh, gaseous nitrogen. We're combining it with gaseous hydrogen. Oh, look, the exact opposite of the Haber process. Notice that we're going from four molecules to two. Everything's a gas, but we're going from more molecules to fewer. That's a decrease in disorder. Here in part three, uh, C, we're going from solid sodium chloride to aqueous sodium, aqueous chlorine, obviously the inc uh, increase in disorder. And finally going from a solid to a liquid uh, is uh, requiring a lot of heat to melt sodium chloride. That's an increase in delta S, all right? Let's take a look at a couple of examples for delta G. Okay, well, here's one that uh, we're going to try to calculate G a couple different ways. We'll do it using Hess first. So, obviously, this guy right here is our target equation. It wants us to calculate the delta G. So, up here, I have a bunch of step equations, and I want to make them look like this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy right here, and I'm going to say... C plus O2 yields CO2. I'm going to multiply everything by 6 so that we get this 6C lining up with this one. And that means I'm going to take this delta G and I'm going to multiply that by 6. So no longer negative 394. It is now negative 2364. Let's take this reaction. We want 3H2 as a reactant, so we'll take H2 plus 1 half O2 makes H2O, and we'll multiply everything by 3. So now the delta G is no longer negative 237, but times 3. Someone's asking for some help for something. We'll get to him in a little bit. And so this is now negative 711. And finally, what are we going to do with this big equation up here? We want the C6H6 as a product. So we're going to take this guy and flip it backwards, and we're going to chop it in half. So now we have 6CO2 plus 3H2O yields C6H6 and seven halves of an O2. So we're going to flip this guy around backwards and divide it by two. So now it's going to be positive 399, 3,199. So we're making sure that everything lines up. Uh, six carbons, six carbons, three hydrogens, three hydrogens, one C6H6, one C6H6, everything else should cancel so the carbons cancel obviously carbon dioxide excuse me three h2o's three h2o's and here are uh nine halves of uh, oxygen and and i must have divided that incorrectly but that's okay we'll stick with it so it looks like everything adds up and so what's the overall energy change here negative 2364 minus 711 plus 3199.5 and we get overall 124.5 so there's a little trip down memory lane for you all right incidentally you could look up all of the individual delta g's in appendix four and you want to make sure that you're multiplying by moles and then you can simply subtract them using this guy all right take it for a spin